Good morning, class six. Yesterday we have started with the new chapter, new empires and kingdoms, chapter ten of your history book. We have talked about Arvind, who was going to play the role of a king, and as we all have an imagination, so he imagine had imagined himself to be a king who had a robe, who was with a tour, and he's going to twirl his mustaches. <coughs> sorry then he had th thought of silver paper wrapped sword with costo but then he had never imagined that he is going to play reena or recite poetry he was wondering who was that king who would have done the all this we have talked about prashasti although this was not the first time you have heard this word before also and you are very much aware of it it was written by the learned people the brahmins in praise of the kings so sambhutra gupta's prashasti we have studied yesterday the prashasti was composed in very long sentences <coughs> sambhutra gupta was a warrior whose body was most charming being covered with the plenteous beauty of the marks of hundred scars so here hari sena the poet who had written about him had they find his different uh, like wounds which he had got because of uh, like you know different uh, like he had fought different battles and because of the um, like you know barb dart swords iron clubs so he had, he could whatever names he could have thought of he had mentioned all that and he has he had tried to tell the reader that samudragupta got hurt because uh, like from all these weapons <coughs> and then yeah, as you can see it in the coins the king who played veena some of the qualities of sambhut gupta are shown on the coin such as this one where he is shown as playing veena so the this these coins tell us that sambhut gupta was fond of playing veena then we have talked about aravrat which was uh, we have seen it in the map and they were the kings who after being defeated they were uprooted and the kingdom was merged into samudragupta's empire whereas in the the rulers of dakshinpat they were 12 uh, but they were after defeating when they have uh, like you know accepted their defeat they were allowed to rule again so you can see the difference how he had treated two empires differently the inner circle of the neighboring states including assam coastal bengal nepal and number of gana uh, sang remember chapter 5 in north west marked in purple on the map they brought tribute followed his orders the rulers of the outlying areas marked in blue on the map perhaps the descendants of the kushans and shakas and the rulers of sri lanka who submitted to him and offered daughters in marriage so the kings they submitted they accepted his sovereignty and they offered their mad daughters in marriage to him <coughs> in this map we discussed yesterday we have talked about vikram samvat it was uh, it is associated with the gupta king chandragupta too who founded it and uh, after defeating sakas he assumed the title of vikramaditya we have to begin with genealogies most prashastis also mention the ancestor of the ruler this one mentions samudra gupta's great grandfather grandfather father and mother his mother kumara devi belonged to lachavi kana while his father chandragupta was the first ruler of gupta dynasty to adopt the grand title of maharaja dhiraj a title that samudra gupta also used his great grandfather and grandfather are mentioned simply as maharajas so his father had adopted the title of maharaja dhiraj which was also adopted by samudragupta his grandfather and uh, great grandfather had adopted the title they or they were mentioned or they were called only as maharajas it seems as if the family gradually rose to importance so you can understand that initially they were important but gradually they became very important and so like initially they were maharajas later on they adopted the title of maharaja dhiraj so 
So from the name you can make out that they got more importance. Arrange these titles in order of importance. Raja, Maharaja, Dharaj, Maharaja. Samudragupta in turn figures in the genealogies, list of ancestors of later rulers of the dynasty such as his son Chandragupta II. We know about him from inscriptions and coins. He led an expedition to western India where he overcame the last of the Shakas. According to later belief, his court was full of learned people, about some of whom you will read in chapter 11. <coughs> if you have to arrange them, you can easily arrange Raja, then Maharaja and then Maharaja Dharaj. So, uh, his son was Chandragupta II and we come to know about him from the inscriptions and the coins. He has led an expedition against the Shakas and according to the later beliefs in the court, he, it is believed that he had in his court there were people, learned people were there in his court. Harshwardhan and the Harsharit. While we can learn about Gupta rulers from the inscriptions and coins, we can find out about some kings from biographies. Harshwardhan who ruled nearly 1400 years ago was one such ruler. His court poet Banabhat wrote his biography, the Harsh Charit in Sanskrit. This gives us the genealogy of Harsha and ends with his becoming king Jayanzain, about whom you read in chapter 9. <coughs> Sorry, also spent a lot of time at Harsha's court and left a detailed account of what he saw. So, from uh, about some rulers we come to know from the inscriptions, coins and from uh, about some rulers we come to know from the biographies. So about Harshwardhan who ruled about 1400 years ago was one such ruler about whom we come to know from the from Banabhat who wrote his biography the Harsh Charit which is in Sanskrit language. He gives us the detailed idea of Harshwardhan about and, and it ends with the uh, with uh, his becoming king like from uh, detail uh, in like whatever happened in his court uh, whatever was the scenario how he became the ruler and all that we come to know from the, from his book Harsh Charit. Harsha was not the eldest son of his father but became king of Thanesar after both his father and elder brother died. His brother-in-law was the ruler of Kannauj and he was killed by the ruler of Bengal. Harsha took over the kingdom of Kannauj and then led an army against the ruler of Bengal. <coughs> so since he was not the eldest son, he was uh, like uh, his brother was supposed to be the ruler. But after his brother and father died, he became the ruler and his uh, brother-in-law was the ruler who was the ruler of Kannauj who was killed by ruler of Bengal. So Harsha he took uh, once uh, like he became the ruler he took over Kannauj and then led an army against the ruler of Bengal. Although he was successful in the east and a conquered Magad and probably Bengal also he was not as successful elsewhere. He tried to cross Narvada to march into Deccan but was stopped by a ruler belonging to Chalukya dynasty Pulukesan II. Pulukesan II didn't allow him to cross Narvada river. So look at the political map of India and list the present day states which Harshwardhan passed through when he went to Bengal and up to the Narmada. The Pallav, Chalukya and Pulukesans Prashasti. The Pallavas and Chalukyas were the most important ruling dynasty in South India. During this period, the kingdoms of Pallavs spread from region around their capital Kanchipuram to the Kaveri Delta, while that of Chalukya was centered around the Raichur Doab between the river Krishna and Tungabhadra. <coughs> so, the Pallavs and Chalukyas were the most important ruling dynasty. They were obviously from the south and uh, the kingdom of Pallava was uh, from the region around their capital. Their capital was at Kanchipuram that was near Kaveri Delta 
while that of Chalukya was centered, it was near the Raichur Dwab between the river Krishna and Tungabhadra. I hold the capital of Chalukya was an important trading center. It developed as a religious center with a number of temples. The Pallavs and Chalukyas frequently raided one another's land, especially attacking the capital cities which were prosperous towns. So they both the uh, like um, uh, empires they raided each other and especially they concentrated on attacking the capital with the because obviously same being the capital they were the rich places the prosperous towns the best known chalukya ruler was pulakesan II. we know about him from a prasasti composed by his court poet ravi kirti this tells us about his ancestor who are traced back through four generations from father to son. Pulakesan evidently got the kingdom from his uncle. So uh, in Chalukya dynasty, Pulakesan too is one of the famous rulers. <coughs> and we come to know about him from a prasasti which was composed by, from the, by the court poet Ravi Kirti. So uh, and if we trace like you know, uh, we, uh, in that prasasti we come to know about uh, like you know four generations about his four generations according to Ravi Kirti he led expedition along both the west and east coast besides he checked the advance of Harsha there is an interesting play of words in the poem Harsha means happiness the poet says that after this defeat Harsha was no longer Harsha Pulakesan also attacked the Pallav king who took shelter behind the walls of Kanchipuram. But the Chalukya victory was short-lived. Ultimately, both the Pallavas and Chalukyas gave way to new rulers belonging to Rashtrakuta and Chola dynasty, about which you will study in class 7. <coughs> so Ravi Kirti tells him about his expedition from both the east and the west coast and he also tells us that how he has stopped Harsha from proceeding or moving towards uh, towards the west then uh, he says that as uh, like you know he's being sarcastic little bit you can say that uh, the word Harsh means happiness but after he was being defeated by Pulakesan he was never ever happy again and Pulakesan also attacked Pallav king but after the defeat after being defeated the Pallav king he uh, took shelter behind the walls of Kanchipuram which was the capital but Chalukya victory but then that was not very long time left they, 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 both these empires lived for short time and that gave way to new dynasties that is Rashtrakuta and the Chola dynasty about whom we will study in class 7 who were the other rulers who tried to control the coast and why so <coughs> Uh, so that you have studied in chapter 9 okay so that's uh, how were these kingdoms administered as in the case of earlier kings land revenue remained important for these rulers obviously we all know that for maintaining the empire the rulers needed the revenue and the land revenue was the most important thing important for these rulers and the village remained the basic unit of administration there were some new developments as well kings adopted a number of steps to win the support of men who were powerful either economically or socially or because of their political and military strength for instance some important administrative posts were now hereditary so you can understand that the administrative post what became hereditary that means after father his son would take over this means that the son succeeded father to these post for example the poet Hari Sena was a Maha Dandanaik or chief judicial officer like his father sometimes one person held many offices for instance besides being a Maha Dandanaik Hari Sena was a Kumara Matya, meaning an important minister, and Sandhi Vigrahaika, meaning a minister of war and peace. <coughs> so, first of all, the uh, one person 
uh, like the, uh, the designation was hereditary second one person can have like two or more post office or the offices simultaneously so besides important men probably had a say in local administration these included the nagar shreshti or chief banker or merchant of the city the sartavahara or the leader of the merchant caravans the pratham kolika or the chief craftsman and the head of the kayast or scribes so besides uh, important men probably had to say the important people had a say when they like you know something was uh, taken like related to administration if something had to be taken decided in, uh, about the administration uh, then they had a say they included the nagar shreshti or chief banker the merchant of the city the sartavahana or the leader of the merchant caravan so they could uh, they were the um, then the pratham kolika or the chief craftsman the head of the kayast or scribe the kayast for the other scribes were the people who used to jot down or write down these policies were reasonably effective but sooner or later some of these powerful men grew strong enough to set up independent kingdoms what do you think may have been the advantage and disadvantages of having hereditary officers so just jog your brain and we will discuss it in the next class that's all for today take care of yourselves be safe at home